Today, I'm joined by Phil Golgi. Phil's the Managing Director of Supply Train, which is a social enterprise working across the UK to help young people access a fairer start into work. So, welcome, Phil. Thanks for having me, Simon. I'm, uh, it's really great to be here. Good. No, thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. So, so Phil, tell us a bit more about Supply Train and, and, and uh, what you do. Okay, so basically supply train, as you say, we're a social enterprise and our kind of mission is to help employers to create fair routes into work. So we do a lot of work with businesses, especially small businesses that don't often have those kind of internal teams to kind of look at where the skills gaps are coming and see, is there a way they can kind of recruit people who they might not necessarily recruit? So for example, people who don't have the, you know, the usual qualifications they're after, or connections or previous experience and then we help those employers kind of put together a package of support usually involves training um, but not always can be kind of mentoring to help those young people get up to speed so that it reduces skills gaps helps the businesses and creates fair routes into work by giving people from different backgrounds or haven't gone to the right school the right university a chance to kind of prove himself in the workplace great right, love it sounds sounds really good so what's the um what's the just briefly what's the benefits for the the employee and what's the benefits for the employer in in, in what you provide so for the employee we we work with a lot of people who say you know i mean basically talent is everywhere opportunity isn't that's you know the kind of crux of what we're talking about so we get a lot of people who come to us and say I've got the ambition, I've got the drive to kind of make it in work, but I might not have been to the right university or I might have had, you know, um, some mental health problems in the past or something like that. And I can't access an opportunity because because business is always asking for one or two years experience and I haven't got it. So what we do is we we help those people by encouraging employers to kind of look at another way of recruiting. So we provide a kind of recruitment service which we attach mentoring support to so an employer would take on a young person and they have a careers coach who kind of checks in with them regularly so say they have problems at home um you know family life or issues travel issues getting to work or just they're struggling it might be their first job they're struggling to kind of fit in in the workplace they have someone kind of impartial that they can talk to to not make any stupid decisions because you know i remember when i was young you might take a job, you have like one bad week and you think, right, I'm off. And we're kind of working with young people to say, that's not the mentality, like this is your opportunity, but you have to take it. So we've had some amazing stories. You know, we've, we've, uh, we know people who, I mean, even in our own office, we've, we took a girl who was sofa surfing. She didn't have kind of a big family support network. And we've kind of, we like to think we kind of live and breathe what we're talking to other employees about. So we gave her an opportunity um, we took her in, we gave her time to kind of settle in. And now she's been with us two years. She's got her own flat in Eastbourne. She's kind of got rid of a lot of the sort of her social circle that was kind of setting her back. And she's, she's really thriving. We hope to kind of turn her into a manager. And she is a classic example of what we're trying to help other businesses do as well, instead of saying that there's skills gaps, but not doing anything differently to address that. And, and what about what about the employer? What's the what's the benefits to the employer? By the way, I love that story. That's I love hearing things like that. But okay, what's, cool. what's the benefits to the to the employer of uh, of working with yourselves? To, to, to so, I guess I we predominantly we work with small businesses, and the reason for that is we feel there's small businesses in every community, um, and they don't. They're not often they don't have the sort of team to kind of they might not have a big hr team they can't run like a massive kind of recruitment drive to encourage young people coming in and it, they can leave them a little bit short-sighted where they're just looking to bring in experience here and now and unfortunately collectively that means the kind of talent pool is getting smaller and smaller and there isn't that sort of wide pipeline of new entrants coming through and learning those basic skills so we work with those employers to look a little bit longer, a little bit broader. So, for example, we're we're also we have um, we're one of 35 companies in the country which is um, 
called a flexi job apprenticeship agency and essentially that means we're approved by government to employ apprentices on behalf of other businesses uh, a lot of small businesses will say you know we'd love to take on apprentices there's too much admin all the government paperwork's a nightmare we can't find young people we we don't know which training program so we try and provide service we say well we'll take care of all of that you just tell us give us a job description give us a person spec we'll find the training provider we'll find the young people to come work for you we'll meet your spec and we will employ them on your behalf so there's not even any employment risk and we might employ them for the first six months and then once they're happy or and they decide yes this is someone we want to stay with us then we transfer employment to them a bit like a kind of temp recruitment agency um but there's more to it in that it, it is a an official apprenticeship and there's loads of support so i guess generally speaking businesses save time they save money um and they they are looking a little bit further ahead so over time they won't have these big skills gap challenges that they currently have at the moment yeah great okay thank you uh, that's great phil and phil out of interest how did how did you get into what you what you're doing now how did you get into this type of industry business so that's a good question um so i guess my passion for this comes from my own kind of lived experience so when i was in my early 20s i was um i i had a lot of mental health issues and um I, I worked a lot of temp jobs. I used to knock on doors selling double glazing. I used to cut grass for the council. I used to anything. Um, I couldn't be inside because a, a lot of my issues were kind of around um, social anxiety. But I knew I was quite good at kind of sales and marketing and, and talking to people, even though I had these issues. And I, I applied for a job. And I, it was the first interview I went to where I told the truth. And I told them what I had these mental health problems. And I was gobsmacked that they gave me the job. And they basically said, yeah, you're great. We'll take you on and we'll support you. So don't worry. You don't have to come to the big meetings. You don't have to come to those awkward social situations. You will build you up over time. And I'm so grateful for that because that helped me get over kind of a lot of my mental health problems. Um, that this, the reason I set up supply train is to kind of play that forward. So essentially that's what we're trying to do is just help other people. It doesn't have to be mental health. It could be, you know, they come from a, a, a poor background. So, you know, for example, we're doing some work in um, the TV and film industry where quite often the entry level role for that is you start as a runner and generally speaking, it's unpaid. You need a car, you need to, you know, and there's things that people from less well-off backgrounds just can't access. They can't afford to work for nothing. They can't, they can't, they don't have a car, you know, so they're kind of cut off from those opportunities. So we're just building a team that will, wherever there are barriers to employment, wherever there's a gap between education and employers, we want to hear from those employers and we will try and put a package together to basically bridge the gap, I guess. Okay, Brilliant. thank you. And so you're the, you're the managing director of Supply Train. Yeah. Um, so what, what was your biggest challenge about sort of becoming a, a managing director? Because, you know, previously, you, if I understand correctly, and please correct me if I'm wrong, you were an employee for other businesses. And then you sort of stepped up to being a managing director. And by the way, are you the, are you the owner of um, Supply Chain? Yes. That's right, yeah, okay. Yeah. So tell, tell me about what the biggest challenge has been to become an owner and a managing director of a business. Yes, yeah, not for the faint hearted. Um, it is a challenge. I think, you know, when you go from being an employee to being an employer or self employed, it is it is difficult. It's there's a lot of work and there's a lot of unknowns. So I think, you know, if you're if it is something you're looking at doing, I think there's a you'll never know all the answers like there's part of you just has to take the jump, I think. I've always wanted my own business where what I've, what I struggled with working for other people is that sometimes the mission on paper is only on paper and it, and it doesn't kind of transcend through the, through the whole company. Whereas at least if I'm in charge and maybe it's a control thing, I don't know, but if I'm in charge, then I can kind of make sure and I can lead that to make sure it kind of, it is implemented in everything we do. So 
that's why I set up on my own, but it is difficult. And I think, you know, uh, the, the, you, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a kind of academic person, I don't think. So what I like about business or anything, my sort of philosophy for life, life is you learn through your mistakes. And I think business is no different, really. You have to kind of set up, you have to have a sort of central mission um, and try and keep to that as close as you can. But you will make mistakes along the way. You will have, it's like a roller coaster ride. There's sometimes there's money coming in, it's great. And sometimes you bid for some work and it doesn't come off and you know you start to worry about all those kinds of things and making sure your staff can pay the mortgages and all that it's not easy but it's it's just a relentless pursuit of making it work i guess and and, and you mentioned there like your staff what what, what sort of size of teams you have at, at the moment so we are a small business so there's only six of us um, but we are looking to grow, hopefully, over the coming years, um, especially with this Flexi Apprenticeship Agency I mentioned. So that is that's something we were only approved for in January. And already we've started a project with the fishing industry. We're doing another local project in um, Hastings in construction. And we feel this is, a, is actually a really good package that will allow us to kind of grow and support more people. Um, but yeah, it's... It, even with just six people it's you know it has its challenges kind of making sure everyone is is uh sort of you know doing what they need to do and and is and everyone's kind of can get paid and there's an opportunity to progress and all that kind of stuff yeah no absolutely it's um i, I you know i often find this when uh we, you know with my clients with when working with them is that actually you know you find and, and particularly when the, the business is smaller that actually you're you're under undertaking most of the roles you know you've you've got you know you're you're actually sort of a a, a recruitment person but actually you've also got to do the the finance and the sales and the marketing yeah. and hr and leadership and management and you know it's it's juggling all of those sort of things so how do you what do you do in particular to you know to help you to juggle all those different things um well i'm very lucky so i do i do employ some amazing people that i, I agree kind of like the finance stuff we've got a finance director who's amazing um so you know and i admit that's my weak spot she is i don't know how to swear but she's very hot on the finances um um but you're right there is a lot of kind of juggling i think delegation is so important it's a skill that you need to learn and you and you need to be um comfortable you can't do all the jobs it's impossible you can't you know you can't do everything you you do need to be able to delegate and you do need to be able to support people understand what you want from something so like the marketing i have an idea of how i want us to market our company but i haven't got the time to do it so you do have to let go, relinquish some of that control and be comfortable with that as well, I think, to let other people bring their own ideas in. Um, but yeah, we've, we've, got a, we've got a really good team. We've got some experienced people um, that kind of drive the business. And then we've got younger people. There's a say, we kind of trying to live our own values that we bring in and we're kind of teaching them what to do. And we hope we can turn them into the leaders of tomorrow. Yeah, no, I, 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 I think, you know, some great sort of, you know, things there. And, and one one thing in particular that you that you said there that rings true with me is this, is surround, surround yourself with a great team. Yeah. You know, all, all successful businesses, the business owner has surrounded themselves with a, with a, a great team. Yeah, um, I think that's so, very true. Absolutely, absolutely right. But yeah, the, the, you know, the delegation, the time management, you know, feeling comfortable with um, with other people doing things, all, all great points. So, so what's the what would you say the the biggest lesson that that you learn um, since you've been a, a business owner and a, a managing director? Well, that's a big question. The biggest lesson that I've learned, yeah, um, I think it's to don't give up. I know that sounds really cheesy and cliche, but you you will have bad days it is it is a roller coaster as i say and um i think just you don't need to kind of don't chase the work i guess like so from our point of view it's really important we work with the right employers 
And sometimes there'll be a tendency to think, well, let's just market ourselves to everybody. You know, all if we market to 100,000 businesses, we'll win more work. But actually, you're kind of diluting what you do. So I think having, you know, knowing who your target audience is and, and knowing why they should choose you um, is really powerful rather than chasing the whole market and not really appealing to anyone. So, yes, we do have kind of months where, especially when we started out, where things were difficult but we are starting to build that base and then they go on and they kind of, they tell, they tell their, their other businesses they work with about your organization and you kind of grow naturally from there. So you don't need to compromise on your values. Yeah. I think that's a, again, that's a really good point that, that you raised there, Phil. And I think, um, I think a lot of business uh, businesses can suffer from this is, as you mentioned, there is chasing work um yeah. without actually strategically thinking about um well who is my target audience how do they benefit from my product or or, or service and and how can i communicate that uh, that to them there's there's yeah. a there's a formula for success that um that i use and i share with all my clients which is b times do equals have mm. um, so uh, first of all, if you work out what it is that you want to have, okay, so what type of clients do you want to, to have? Yeah. And then, okay, what do I want to, what do I need to do to get those clients? Mm. Now, the thing is, what I find is most business owners therefore focus on what they need to do and they do, 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 and yeah, they just yeah, constantly yeah. doing more. Yeah. They forget the B part. Yeah. Who do I need to be? Yeah, yeah, exactly that. What is it? What type of business do I need to be to attract these type of clients? Um, yeah. That's often the bit that's forgotten about. It's, mm. it's work harder, work more, work harder, work more. Yeah. Face those clients. Actually, the value in taking a step back and working out who do we need to be? So I a really good point there. Yeah, no, I think that's a fair point. I mean, um, I'd say as well, kind of when new business comes to us, there was a time when we started up we'd almost try and oversell like oh you should work with us because xyz whereas now i feel we've reached the place where we'll kind of have a really honest discussion with people quite often we'll tell businesses you don't need us like we're not the service for you away you go and i think not only does that kind of build honesty and trust but the work you do win these people have 100 percent bought into you and they you know we are their advisors they'll listen to us and and we kind of do better things, I think. Yeah, again, there's some very valid points there, Phil, in, in terms of um, becoming that uh, trusted advisor. Um, yeah. You know, people people like to work with people that they know, like, and trust. Yeah. Um, so it's build, building up that, that that trust with them, um, but also just being open and honest. One of one of the one of the best definitions I, that I've heard of, um, of selling um, because we, we all get a little bit conscious about selling and yeah, yeah. but actually one of the best definitions I've heard of it is professionally helping people to buy yeah you know so actually you're not selling to them you're helping them to buy yeah you know and helping them to, to understand what it is that you your business your products can how it can help them mm. it's interesting you know you asked me earlier about advice so one of the best pieces of advice i had in training was uh, around sales training mm. and um and the person delivering it was like you think of yourself more like a gp yeah. you're, so if someone is coming to you and you're trying to find out what is what's where does it hurt you know what's your pain point and then you're kind of suggesting things that you think might support them and that for me is it kind of works quite well it's you're not here this is what we've got this is what we've got but you're it just just taking that approach makes you rethink really how you should listen and like listening is so important and understanding where the pain point is and suggesting things is much more beneficial than just this is what we offer this is why you need it yeah i i, I think that analogy of a, a gp is great because you know you, a, a gp can't diagnose something until they've asked the questions yeah exactly that they, they can't they can't they don't know what medicine or what what to suggest until they've asked the questions and understand what the the patient uh, yeah. 
you know, what, what symptoms they're experiencing. And that's what you've just described there is the same with businesses mm -hmm. to ask them questions and understand. So great. So what, 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 what does the future hold for supply trains? Well, so I guess over the next 12 months, our kind of main focus is growing this um, apprenticeship agency service. So as we've, we've, um, we're very fortunate, as I said earlier, we've won a kind of contract with the fishing industry. So we're hoping we'll be the first ever employer of fishing apprentices in the country, believe it or not. Um, and we feel this is, you know, a really good model for businesses where the standard apprenticeship employment route doesn't work. As I mentioned, film and TV, where there's a lot of freelancers is a great model. And those smaller businesses, kind of micro businesses that just want someone to handle everything that's that's where we can support so that's our kind of key focus is to really kind of drive that and see how many organizations we can support um, and how many young people we can get into a fulfilling jobs right and, and uh, look, out of interest do you um do you, do you have a vision of uh, like how many um how many young people you would like to help in the future or um um, yeah, I guess so. I mean, we were very fortunate in the pandemic. We we actually, as a business, did remarkably well at, from the pandemic. Rishi Sunak announced something called the Kickstart Scheme, which helped young people under the age of 25 on universal credit get jobs. And we acted as a Kickstart gateway. And from a very, very small team, we actually we were the biggest um, kickstart gateway in the whole Southeast. So we helped 900 young people get a job in just over a year. Um, and we have built our infrastructure. So we're very big on our kind of CRM and making sure kind of everything works together. Um, so we'd like to think over, you know, apprenticeships will take longer than that, but I think we want to get to a stage where we're kind of helping two, 300 young people every year access a decent job. That's brilliant. Well, first of all, congratulations on on helping nine hundred sort of people get a job. I mean, that's that's phenomenal in its own right. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, it'd be great to see you get to that sort of two hundred, sort of three hundred. Um, you know that that that'd be brilliant to 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 see and and, and obviously grow from there as well because you know it, it's to help young people in into work is absolutely fantastic. So. Yeah. Um, and look, a question I like to um, I, I like to ask um, everybody that I, I interview is, um, uh, what what's the best advice that you would give to an eighteen year old you? Um, this is controversial, but I'd say don't go to university. <laughs> right. Okay. I feel I was like I went to university and I dropped out, and I and I like looking back now i think a lot of it was it's just a kind of write a passage everyone is told i'll oh, finish your a levels go to university and for me i was done with academic learning i just like learning through doing i like hands-on i like making mistakes and going oh next time i should do it like that much more kind of practical so honestly that i would say just get a job learn and start what i'm doing now much earlier than i did because i didn't really start doing this till my mid 30s and i could have could have been doing it at least 10 years before that i think yeah i think this is and look by the way i've got um i've got two daughters one's uh one's only 14 but the other one's 17 but um mm. yeah it's it's working out what that vocation in life actually is isn't it what what it is that um you're passionate about what excites you what it is that you know that, that you want to do you know going as you go old get older and sometimes that can be really difficult to work out when yeah, you're yeah. when you're younger isn't it as you get older yeah. you realize and you know look I think it's, it's you know it probably it took me until I was probably in my 40s so a lot later than you until I worked out what what it was that actually what was my vocation in, mm -hmm. in other words being a a business coach and a, a mentor and helping you know businesses to to survive and thrive and that sort of thing and you know that that took me a while to, to work yeah. out but I'm, I'm pleased to say that I found it so and I'm, I'm glad that you found yours as as That's well it. and um Look, thank you very much for um, for doing this uh, interview. I, I'm, uh, you know, it's been really good to 
to find out more about you know you and about your journey and about your business so thank you very much well thanks for inviting me it's really nice to talk to you great thank you